you guys enjoyed the last list like this, which I want to say thanks for all the positivity on. It means a lot. It's nice to know that what I'm interested in also happens to be what performs the best, I will say. And I always love giving people new bands to listen to, so here are some more metal bands that you've probably not heard of yet, from new and upcoming ones to older projects. And like last time, if you have heard of them, well, that's simply successful marketing on my part. Like my granddaddy used to say, I thought I was wrong once, but I was merely mistaken. This time around, I have some shorter entries just due to lack of information on the band's history or repetition of it's so awesome on my part, which I figured you didn't want to hear. So in this entry, we'll cover a few more bands than last time. Seriously, someone more important than myself needs to get a few of these guys on the phone for an interview. Bethlehem. Just kidding, I never recommend Bethlehem. I like you more than that. Nocte Abducta is an active German black metal band formed in 1993 as I can't see my script because the cat is in front of me, formed in 1993 as Desihara, and for some time as Dinner Alf Uranus. Yes, go ahead and laugh. With some true black metal tracks and some more atmospheric pieces which almost entirely abandoned the blackness, they have something everyone might like. I listen to their atmospheric stuff to drown out snoring while sharing rooms on vacation, so they also have utilitarian purposes. In particular, Mind Tile 1 and 2 are great albums with amazing atmosphere. Weirdly enough for me, I kind of prefer their chiller music. Their more regular black metal is great too, but Mind Tile just has so much care put into creating a little world within it that I can't help but appreciate that. Nocta Abducta is also a band that I'm still in the process of listening to the discography of in its entirety, so if you have a favorite favorite album of theirs, definitely leave it in the comments so I and others can check it out. Heavy Lord is another band that has great atmosphere, but in a bit of a different direction. Their Bandcamp bio describes it best. It's painfully slow music, plowing forward more slowly than your average garden snail. Although it is accurate, the use of slow does make the inner writer cringe a bit, doesn't it? Formed in 2002 and still active, Heavy Lord has some of the best doom I've ever heard. There's really no other way to describe the dense rhythmic sound other than that. If you love Doom and the feeling it gives you, you need to check them out. They're really underrated in comparison to their sound. I mean, it's just heaven. Hell? Metalheads are confusing to compliment. No, let's not scratch his but let's go back to some favorite ultra obscure kind of guys with Swamp Temple, a black metal band formed in 2013 and active to this day. A friend recommended it to me and it's just fantastic. I encourage you to listen to it on repeat and earn them that sweet, sweet Spotify royalties check because they deserve it. This is becoming a theme, but they have a great sense of atmosphere mixed with equal parts straight black metal. So there's something for the artists and something for the musical theorists alike. Spellbound is just a the beauty of a song that reminds me of some of my favorite Your Files tracks with higher, cleaner production. The vocals use multiple styles and show a range of talent, and as if that wasn't all impressive enough, there's only one guy behind it. I know that's not too uncommon nowadays and probably hasn't been too uncommon in the past, especially with technology making it possible to record and mix solo performances much easier, but it's still a ton of work and effort to make something that sounds bad on your own, let alone something that sounds awesome. Trust Trust me, I knew the former. Continuing with another solo project, we have Mosgrim, a Norwegian black metal project that started releasing this year. The guy behind it is super nice and very active on social media, so it's a great project to follow because there's tons of behind the scenes tidbits about his inspirations and lots of updates about what's going on. The production is crazy great and the music is that unique kind of sound that I've only heard before in Life Lover, which I personally really like. I'm not sure how to describe it beyond that. It arises from a combination of that scratchy sound of cassette players and the high production quality of modern day, as well as some more seemingly upbeat riffs and slightly more legible vocals than your average black metal. Speaking of modernity, it's interesting to see how these modern projects involve modern day nerd culture. It's no secret that black metal is about 50% D&D nerds and 50% Lovecraft nerds. And as we move out of that generation, new nerdy things are going to take their places as sources of inspiration for the music. On his TikTok, Mosgrim says that some of the tracks were inspired by video game soundtracks which I think kinda shows, but I won't guess 
best at any potential ones because the only video games I've ever played are The Sims and Legend of Zelda. Peklo is an actor of Ukrainian black metal band with two full albums released and a totally empty Encyclopedia Metalum page. So that kind of sucks. I got a recommendation on my site to listen to them or else I may not have heard of them. But even if I can't tell you much about the band, I can tell you about the music. Their debut rivals the skill and sound of already well-established bands to the extent that I'm anxious to see where they go from there and kind of curious about what the guy has worked on before, if anything else. It has a unique vocal style that's expressive and stylish with just the right amount of atmospheric spice mixed in with great instrumentals and a fantastic groove. Often with black metal bands, you can run into an issue where their riffs and overall sounds start to follow a pretty straight path. There's no variation in rhythm or depth and it can get boring pretty quickly. It all just kind of blends into one continuous noise. However, Piccolo hasn't got any issues with that in either music or vocals. I really love how they switch up vocals in the song to imitate the music itself and it's overall very cohesive, intelligently laid out, and it makes my ears real happy to hear it. A lot of vocalists in extreme music tend to stick to just the typical scream talk, which is great on its own, but it's fun to hear people experimenting with different vocal substyles of that too. Their musical style reminds me a lot of the older Mayhem stuff as well as Emperor's Best Tracks, so if you like those guys, definitely check Peklo out. Now we're going back to Germany with Labyrinth of Stars, a black and death metal band with one album whose name I embarrassingly have never spelled correctly directly on the first try. Again, their Bandcamp biography has the best description of their style. Purely dissonant, otherworldly death metal intertwined with ancient technologies, cold extraterrestrial steel, and xenomorphic entities. Their music features some of the best elements of technical death metal and blackened death, like the groove and guitar expertise and a clever usage of echoes and dissonance that makes you feel that dissociative, transient feeling you get when you're just kind of out of it mentally. And again, there's so much clear understanding of what makes good music here for a Butte, that I'm interested in where they will go and where they came from. They have already established some clear storytelling in their lyrics, which is always interesting to follow and see if there's an overarching theme developing as the band continues on. If you're a fan of newer death metal bands, you'll probably find a track you like by them. And for this next band, I'll tell you the deal. I try to keep anything I label as obscure or unknown, etc, etc, to bands who have around a thousand Spotify listeners or less, with very few exceptions. It's just the easiest gauge of popularity I have, and that number kind of guarantees that few people who stumble across my content have also stumbled across theirs. Even better if they have no Spotify at all. However, this one is special to me and none of my metalhead friends ever know who I'm talking about when I mention them, even though they've had some commercial success. So I figured I could slide it into this video without breaking the promise I made in the title too bad. Some of the other ones on this list have like four listeners, so I consider it evened out. Woods of Ypres was a death doom black metal band from Canada formed in 2002. However, I just learned how to pronounce their name in 2022. With an unstable lineup of members, the only consistent one was the lead singer and guitarist David Gold, which would spell doom for the band when Gold was killed in a car crash at age 31 in 2011. Seriously, the lineup was pretty kooky, which is very unfortunate. Gold's death has always been heartbreaking to me because he was quite talented and would have gone far if he hadn't died so young. He was blessed with a beautiful voice and is perhaps my favorite singer right alongside Peter Steele of Typo Negative. Really, these two guys have the most gorgeous vocals I have ever heard and of course they've both passed away because life could never be so kind. Gold often sang outright rather than using death black metal vocal styles, but his deep pitch means his voice always suited the music, and of course he did use some screaming in appropriate places. You know this stuff is good and unique when you've got to use three separate genres to describe it. You may think it would be all over the place because of that, however the sound is always cohesive and comes together to create something that I haven't found in any other band. And why this band is so special to me is not only because it's a blend I love, but the lyrics are heartfelt and resonate with me on a deeply personal level. If you struggle with depression and find music about it comforting, I I especially recommend checking them out. Not everyone feels the same way, not everyone experiences depression the same way, but if this band could comfort someone else like it did me in my hard times, I want them to know about it. Because this band, uh, more than once, has probably saved my life. And again, the music is just technically fantastic. You don't have to be a sad boy to enjoy this one.
Cemetery is an old school death metal band formed in, uh, well, here's the thing, I'm not sure when. There isn't much out there about them, and they have the same name as, well, a lot of things, so it's hard to find what is out there. Their SoundCloud says they were formed in 1986, and on their YouTube channel they have tour uploads from 1992, but their first album was released in 2019, at least according to a Bandcamp comment, this is the case. It seems about right as their YouTube channel was created in 2019 as well, so I I guess that's just when they decided an online presence was necessary. No matter the intricacies of their setup, their stuff is great. Besides the obvious old school style death metal that they play, their instrumentals and especially vocals make me think of Metallica as far as comparisons go, but of course they keep their traditional death metal lyrical themes and groove. If any of the cemetery guys are listening and y'all want someone to manage your socials and site, hit me up. I think you could use a new guy and I have hilariously low self-respect so you can give me a corn chip and I'll still do it every single day. All right, I'm gonna cheat again because neither of these videos has had enough women in them. Also, my throat hurts really bad right now because I'm still getting over the flu so I think I deserve a treat, okay? Convent is a 2015 formed death doom band from Denmark with two albums and one demo that, again, no one ever really knows but everyone always thanks me for bringing up. They're some of the baddest women on the scene. The vocals will blow you away and I choose to believe Rika doesn't use a voice changer because I have got little else to live for. Their demo is my favorite work of doom metal ever because it's just so doom. Nothing encapsulates what I want from doom metal more than that demo does, so I really recommend you check it out. But that isn't to say their newer stuff isn't doomy or good. Call Down the Sun, their album release this year, is frankly outstanding and they only hone their sound more with every release. The instrumentals are great on their own, but the vocals and additional touches are what really brings it together in one awesome package, especially the samples. I love me a good sample, why else would I like Rob Zombie so much? I believe it's the guitarist who has talked about Sleep being her favorite band and you can hear hints of that in the music. I would also venture to say that their new album has many touches that call back to folk music and I absolutely love folk metal, so that's awesome. How many times can I say atmosphere and awesome in one video? Somebody get the count in the comments. I'm not going to because I'm lazy. <coughs> Embodiment, or supplication as they began was a death metal band up until the late 90s, and then they became Christian alt-rock. Yeah, that's very funny to me too. I would say I included them on this list just because that's silly as all get out, but their death metal was actually really good, which honestly makes it even more hilarious. <laughs> to add to the absurdity of the whole thing, the band begun when the members were only 14 years old and started playing shows right away. It's really one to think of when you want to feel bad about yourself and how little you've done with your pathetic life because not only did they start playing shows, their music was killer. With vocals to rival Die Side, they've got some real groovy old school instrumentals with hints of punk influences that really add to the sound. When I was 14, I was too lazy to get an amp for my electric guitar, so this one's really depressing to me. I just played my electric guitar without an amp, and yes, it sounded exactly how you think it did. And no, I did not do it consistently either. And I will mention here, I discovered Embodiment and many others through a YouTube channel called Rare Metal Rarities. The guy running it uploads some real bangers and even stuff he doesn't personally care for, which means it's a great collection with a broad variety of bands to pick from. If you don't like one, you might like another. A lot of older stuff I found through him as well as some of the underground new bands I've talked about before. I'll have a link to his channel in the description. And we'll end on 10 recommendations this time. I hope you enjoyed the list and found a few of them interesting enough to check them out. If you did, leave a comment and tell me what you thought. Liking this video is a great way to tell me you liked it and disliking this video is a great way to tell me to shut up already. Subscribe if you want to know when the next one of these comes out. I do plan to continue doing these videos as well as updating my site where I post some artists that need more appreciation, darkandobscure.neocities.org, whenever I can. Metal isn't the only thing I post about, but hopefully you find the other stuff interesting too. I know you're really here because you love my charming sense of humor and dashingly good looks, so all that shouldn't be a problem anyways. Finally, if you want to support this channel monetarily, my Etsy and Depop stores are great ways to do that. Money from those also funds my tape collection, so, you know, it's on topic. Also, I guess I should mention I have a Redbubble too, I just kind of forget about it. Making $4 off of a product that the consumer pays $20 for is very true in my opinion. Thanks so much for watching. Juicy!